record a message. Hey, it's Jim calling. Hello, who's that? Hey, Tom, it's Jim. Hey, Jim. Tom, how are you doing? <laughs> oh, man. Uh, this is like calling uh, Indonesia around here. <laughs> Nothing but tangled wires and... So we're 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 on we're on we're on the line here. Yeah, I'm, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about down by law, but but first I want to know what what it's like uh, weather-wise in Cal. Oh, weather-wise, um, you know it's it's uh, I don't know it's probably about 80 and uh, blue skies, uh, no wind. Uh, it's a it's a it's like a perfect summer day out here, Jim. Sounds like paradise. It is, it's very close to that. We got like 96 degrees. You got bugs. And humid. And humid, yeah. And bugs, well, you know, your normal New York City bugs. Yeah. <laughs> Water bugs. <laughs> oh man, so so do you remember it all? This film we made uh, about 40 years ago. <laughs> Back when I was young, thin and handsome. <laughs> yes, of course I do. I keep it as a chronicle. Oh. Uh, <laughs> chronicle of shame. <laughs> no, no, I salute it. Uh, you know, to be to be uh, you know preserved, you know, in, in such a uh, in such good shape. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are really a, a real gift to to the movie, and you know, I don't oh, know. Thanks, I, yeah. I love the character that that you made and all the stuff you brought to the film. Amazing. Oh, thanks. Well, it was a great uh, experience. You know, it was one of, the, one of the first things I did, and I didn't expect to have so much to do. I, <laughs> <laughs> I tri are you saying I tricked you? No. Yeah, I think you did. Yeah, I thought it was a small part, and I realized that it's like you know, it's like carrying a piano. You realize you're holding up the the other end of that piano, and you, there's three other guys with you know. Uh, yeah, it, was, it wasn't the short film that I told you it would be, I guess. But Zach, you made this beautiful character, Zach, that uh, I remember at first he was going to be a musician. Oh, right. And then we mm. talked about that, and that seemed too close to you. Yeah, yeah. And then you, it was your idea for him to be a DJ. Well, if he still okay. get the music in there, and those guys are kind of nomads, and they're kind of faceless guys that bounce around in different towns and keep changing their names. Are you there? Yeah. They're kind of like crooks, in a way. You know, it's yeah. showbiz with a, with with something missing. You know. Yeah. But at the same time, they're all they're 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 all very much a part of our lives without uh, being too annoying. You know? And uh, so yeah, yeah they I, are I, like con men too, in a way. I mean, but but for the beauty of music. In the case yeah. of uh, Zach. Plus, you can show up at the station looking like hell, and no one knows you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but Zach looked pretty good. What you know? Yeah. I remember the. Uh, that was just my own vanity. The plaid pants thing was your idea. You decided Zach would be like would wear plaid, sort of like golf pants almost. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think uh, it takes a lot of courage to wear plaid, and uh, it's like it, it's like wearing red pants. I think that takes more courage to wear red pants. I've only seen that in St. Louis. Yeah, that's a hard one to pull off. Yeah. Red You pants. need a white belt. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, white shoes. Huh. Kind of dress like my uh, my relatives in Ohio. <laughs> white belt, white shoes, the red pants. Uh, <laughs> but plaid, yeah. Um, and plaid the shoes. The good. shoes were your actual shoes. Too. Oh, right, right. Those amazing shoes. Yeah, I forgot about that, yeah. I found those. Those were my pointed days. I uh, I must admit I'm, I've I've moved on from those pointed days. I know. I noticed last time I saw you. That was a big change. Yeah, I've gone to a round toe, and uh, my feet are happy for it. <laughs> uh, Although you used to wear like uh, engineer boot, round toed boots sometimes. I remember. Yeah, but mostly I was always on the hunt for the points. For the points. Yeah. yeah. Now they're coming back apparently. They are coming back. Yeah, you know, and I guess I, that's a reason why you're not wearing them. Maybe that's it. Maybe <laughs> I'm like a, it's like pistons. They're down, I'm up. You're a contrary. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a great film. I watched it again last night. It's meditative at times. Uh, and and there's something uh, about the, the look of, of the black and white that kind of slows you down a little bit. And it, and it has a, has its own peculiar 
inner rhythm. It's like a Russian neo fugitive episode of the honeymooners in a way. It's just got a its own it's 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 funny but you you, you catch yourself sliding into kind of a biblical state as well sometimes. It's a, it's an odd ride. You know? It's like a fun house. But uh but the car's moving very slow. And um I didn't know if I was going to be able to sit down and watch it. I mean, watch myself. I usually get up if I'm watching myself on right. film, and I have to w move around and leave the room. But I was able to sit there. So. Huh. Yeah, I can't. I can't watch it. But uh, <laughs> I just can't. You know, I can't watch any of the the films anymore. Uh, but uh, I, I sure have really. Uh, the, my fondest memories are of making Down by Law. Ah. Uh, and I don't know if it's just the people or the experience or being in New Orleans and the swamps or I think it's just a combination of all those things. But that was, in my memory, the best experience I ever had on a, on a film production. Well, I was happy to be part of the collaboration, you know, the, you know uh, coming up with spontaneous uh, dialogue and, and whatnot. I didn't expect to be uh, uh, integrated into that level of the of the process, and it was uh, delightful to be, you know, to be having a, a, an open uh, dialogue about those things. Because in, in most films, it's uh, it's so departmentalized that uh, you know you you put your nail in the wood and you go. You know? Yeah. And, uh, this was much more uh, much more involving. You know. Yeah, I think that's because I have no idea what I'm doing, so <laughs> I depend on everyone else to come up with it. <laughs> But man, you brought so many things to the film. You're, you was pretty much improvised. Your all of your dialogue, although we had ideas for the scenes. But oh, right, right. And I remember too being surprised of a few things, like when they, when you're kind of like stuffed into that cop car. Oh, right. You were like kick. I thought you were gonna kick the windows right out of it, which <laughs> would have been improvised. I didn't tell him to do that. <laughs> but a, a lot of just so many beautiful things that. You, you know everything you brought, plus your songs too. This oh, right. from Rain Dogs for the opening and end of the film. Yeah, I thought that really worked in there. You know, it was almost like it felt like it was almost like it was written for the uh, the picture, which wasn't the case. But uh, uh, sometimes you put two things together and they just, you know, how that works with music. And, yeah, you know. but also I had those songs existed. So even when uh, we were sort of designing the parts of the film, we had them. In a way, they inspired images from the film oh, rather right. than the other way around. Yeah. So. I love that whole sequence, going past the hearse and the graveyard and the neighborhoods and all that. Yeah, it was just so much to look at. And um, it was like a, uh, you know, film was kind of new for me uh, at, at that time, and I thought that you paid a lot of attention to the world going on around you, and at the same time, you also made it look like that we were shooting on the moon sometimes. <laughs> you know? Like those, you know, those science fiction guys in the 50s would use an egg beater and they'd light it in <laughs> such a way as to suggest that it might perhaps be a weapon yeah. from Mars or something. You know? Yeah. Uh, that, that sometimes you, you know, and, and even the graffiti on the walls of the prison was like, I, I wanted to go in there and look closer. A lot of times I wanted you to go in on some of those those things it was yeah yeah graphically pleasing well, uh, so a lot of that stuff was really there we didn't add you know we didn't really oh, build right. a lot of sets yeah. hey hey do you remember when we had that you know the jag that your character yeah. drives and and we, we you and i got to drive cruise around one night in yeah. it and i remember you say, looking over and saying you need a particular kind of music in a car like this and i said well what kind do you think and you said Julie London. <laughs> you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a nice ride. That was a nice car. Yeah. Don't smoke in bed. That's my favorite. Yeah. Right. yeah. Wow. But then, then I'd forgotten that, that we uh, sang a few lines off uh, the Roy Orbison song in there. Oh, that's right. Uh, I was all right for a while. Uh, yeah, I was crying, crying, yeah. The song yeah, Crying. Yeah, 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 that was really nice. Yeah, we got that in there, Roy. And 
it, it was just, it's very funny. It's so deadpan, the film. The humor, it kind of waits. It's like it, it, a, a line comes, and then there's a then there's a fall, and then there's a wait, and then there's another line. It's, it's, it's got its own, it crawls forward in its own odd way. And and, uh, and Bob plays right into that, because he, he, he plays more the holes than the line. The way he delivers the line, you know, he, he's he, he has that natural physical humor and and natural uh, timing, and uh, I thought it really would have tied the whole thing together. And, uh, yeah, what? A, yeah, he really has an odd sense. I remember that that line about it's a sad and beautiful world. Oh, yeah. He was supposed to say it's a sad and beautiful song, I believe, and then yeah. he said it's a sad and beautiful word. Yeah, right. And you and I said, wait, what? cut, you know, wait, what yeah. did he say? Yeah. What did you say, word. Bob? Sudden and beautiful word. And then yeah, we said, so oh, we world. thought we said world. Oh, and then we yeah. changed it to that. And Roberto yeah. was like, okay, I agree. <laughs> Remember how he used to say, I agree, when when he understood nothing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, God. And yeah. I, his score was really beautiful. I thought that this whole sense of the... Found sound uh, and trying to replicate that intermittent, haphazard dripping of sounds in nature. You know that kind of like bug music. Or, uh, it, it's really it was really a. He John can pick up anything and play it. We'd be out there in the trees, waiting for a, the beginning of a scene, and he'd pick up a uh, like a. Uh, a PVC pipe from a leftover from a irrigation system. And he'd, he'd put it up to his mouth and he'd get the most interesting sound. Yeah, out like of it. didgeridoo type sounds. Yeah. Or, but he also he had some really amazing people uh, recording on that score. Some of your yeah, cohorts, Rebo, Rebo yeah. yeah, and uh, Nana Vasconcelos, All right, right. and Ardo Lindsay, and. He had some really amazing... Yeah, Tony Garnier. Yeah, Tony Garnier, bass. for sure. Yeah. yeah, great bass player. Yeah, that was a really great score. Have you played with Tony? No, because he's Dylan kind of I stole him away. I played with him on one, uh, one or two songs on that uh, Rain Dogs. Oh, he record. did play. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he's excellent. And I love the scene. I love the scene with uh, Vernel Banieri's that you did after mm. after Roberto, where he comes and sets you up. With oh, him. right. He's a pretty amazing guy, too. Yeah, he's got a real, kind of something kind of snake-like about him, and at the same time, he's very, yeah, he's very calming. Yeah. He's calming he's like a snake. Interesting. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. And we had so many great people, Robbie Mueller and Claire oh, God, Denis, yeah. and man, we, we had a good group. Well, you always put together uh, you know, these international uh, guerrilla foundations. That, yeah. You know, people that can solve problems, uh, regardless of the depth or the timing of them, which I guess is what you have to do when you put together a group. You have to be able to certainly plan for the unexpected, so you need people that uh, don't rattle under pressure, right? Yeah, I like to check and see if they're wearing like torn articles of clothing, and then you know they're good. You know they're cool. <laughs> they're good. If their clothes look too nice, you yeah. know, yeah, makes me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I, 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 they were all great. Robbie was great. A lot of those setups went on for a little too long for me, but that's just an actor's point of view, you know, because you you, know, you kind of feel like a candle sometimes, you know, and you've been lit. Yeah, and, it's and hard. You want to make sure you do your scene before you've you've burned down, but yeah. yeah plus, I tend to let it roll, you know, for quite yeah. a while after. But I like that. You know, I think you catch stuff when you. You do. Uh, you catch stuff. You weren't. Yeah. You're yeah, not sure. Everybody's trying to direct in their own way. You know, they like they know how big they are in the scene, and and that when it starts, when it stops. I guess the best way to do it is that there is no beginning, really to a scene and there really is no ending to a scene or, or that thing is to be determined by you and and, and it's best if the actors just uh, kind of go out there and turn on the hose right and you, you're the vessel 
Yeah, I think you have to just, you know, I just, I think acting's about reacting. Yeah. So, you know, we work together and we collaborate on the characters. Yeah. And then it's kind of like letting that character exist in, in a scene. Yeah. And, uh, and they react as the character rather than acting or, as I like to say, acting. Acting. You know, you can see a mile away when somebody's up there acting. <laughs> Like telling you what the damn scene's supposed to mean. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, this, I think this, uh, you have to go in kind of uh, approach it more like a uh, an animal. I guess that's the best way to do it. A lot of yeah. people have remarked on how cool you look with a hairnet. Oh, yeah. Well, I uh, haven't got a chance to wear that since. Really? I've got it on a nail. Maybe, on, maybe on your next tour you should rock that look again. <laughs> Yeah, you do look good with a hairnet. Well, I hear that a lot now. <laughs> and, uh, it's coming you know, back I, to you. <laughs> and uh, you, you were, uh, you wanted me to uh, remark on some of these older films about uh, what was that? Oh, oh, I was thinking about Shack Out on 101. Oh yeah, with Lee Marvin. Yeah. Oh That'd yeah. Great. yeah. Man, I have no idea who directed that. I don't remember. I don't think anybody knows or. Or maybe no one maybe did direct it. I don't think the guy <laughs> that directed it knows that he directed it. But I remember the scene when Lee Marvin is telling that guy why he wants to work out with weights because he wants to get a really big neck. Yeah. And he's really skinny and scrawny <laughs> in the movie, right? Yeah. That's a great one. What was the one I'm trying to think of? I was a prisoner on a chain gang? Or... Uh, yeah, That's and then there's title. Prisoner I, of Sharks. I was Shark. a fugitive from I was a, a fugitive from a chain gang? Yeah. And Prisoner of Shark Island with oh. Paul Muni, I think. Oh, wow. And, of course, The Defiant Ones. Oh, right. And that was with uh, uh, Sidney Poitier. With Sidney Poitier. Who is he and, handcuffed uh, to? He's handcuffed to... Uh, Tony Curtis. Tony Curtis. God, what a great combination. Yeah, that was, in a way, in an oddball way, a kind of impetus for this story. And yeah. some for you and John, you know? Yeah. With that, the, the racial implication. Yeah, but, right. Two guys stuck together that really can't stand each other. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love John. No, I don't mean that. But I mean I, those I had characters. To create all that hostility. <laughs> yeah, no, as characters. Oh yeah, I know. I, I, uh, John. And then we went on to do other things. I have you to thank for the for the uh, seminal experience. And then uh, John and I went, as you did it yourself, go on to to be part of fishing with John. Which That's was, right. Uh, unforgettable. No out matter how, on, how I try, I can't forget it. Out on the water, <laughs> fishing with John. Uh, oh. I guess, I don't know. Uh, fishing shows where no one catches a thing. Um, but they're there for the viewing and for the, and to create a mystery and suspicion. Suspicion fishing. <laughs> Well, do you remember when we got locked up in the in the Orleans Parish Prison oh, for like yeah. part of a day? Oh, right, right. Yeah, just kind of, to get a feel for it. Yeah, and we walked in there, and the, even the uh, even the the guards on the cell block did not know we weren't real, actual new prisoners. Oh, right. And we got put in those cells, and everyone was going, "Hey, baby," you know. Hey, <laughs> it was baby. like, "Whoa!" Yeah, some new All right, fr here. fresh meat, new yeah. chicken. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I do remember that. It was, uh, and then I start wondering if some terrible mistake could happen and that, that I would never actually be allowed out again. Uh, or maybe it was just a cruel joke on your part. Oh, Jim. man. Yeah, but I was in there, too, yeah. so <laughs> I made a mistake with the... I was sticking close to you, Jim. I, I knew that <laughs> I had to be near an executive at that time. I yeah, really. And then how about running into Pee Wee Herman out there in the middle of nowhere? Yeah, that was strange. God, he just wandered up, and and, you know, out, and it was dark, and and he just wandered up out of the darkness, and then all of a sudden he was standing there. And it, yeah, yeah, it, we were shooting the scene with the sad and beautiful world scene. Oh, that's right, yeah. And we were way, we, there was no one around, middle of the no night. There were no buses, there were no cabs. No, I don't even remember cars going no. by, nothing. And then these, this guy walks up. It's like running into Jackie Gleason in Tibet. Yeah. You don't expect it. Yeah. It's so out of context. 
or Ernest Borgnine in like Poland. <laughs> I once ran into Joey Ramone by the Berlin Wall. Oh wow! That was kind of, but that's almost more predictable. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, and he had—he uh, just walked up out of the dark. He was unshaven. Mm -hmm. He was smoking, smoking like cigarette. hundred millimeter cigarettes, <laughs> at Virginia Slims or something. <laughs> He's a great guy, though, man. I, I'm a big—I'm a huge fan of oh, Kiwi's Playhouse. Fan. What, what a genius! Oh man! But man, I didn't even know who he was. You know. Yeah. He didn't look like Pee Wee. No, no. He was Paul Rubens. Yeah, right. He's wearing a leather jacket. He needed a shave. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what the hell? And you remember the, like, we had to drive every morning when we shot in the swamps across the Lake Pontchartrain. train. Oh, that, right. that bridge, I think it's the longest bridge on the right. planet. Right. Where Jane Mansfield, I think, got decapitated. Is that really where, where that happened? I think so, on that bridge. But that would always be at like 6 a.m. or something. Yeah. We'd be heading up to the swamp. Yeah, I remember getting up early. It was part of the whole routine there. And uh, getting up at the Bayou Plaza. Casey was, uh, Casey I had, was I had two tiny. kids. Yeah. We were all living in a hotel room, me, Kathleen, and the two kids. Boy, that was, that was special. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Man. But you, you had been in, you, you knew New Orleans because you played there. You'd been there before. Like I, I had, I had been there before our shooting, but only to prepare the shooting. I, I, I really didn't. So it was kind of like shooting on the moon yeah. for me. You know, it was such a magical place. I think that's partly why the film is kind of like a fairy tale. In a yeah, way. yeah, it is like a fable. You know. But um, you, what we, you know, what. what we, you were a big fan of New Orleans and as oh, a place yeah. and as a culture before we ever did this. Well, mostly my connection was through the music. Uh, you know, yeah. The fact that it had been the kind of the, the birthplace of American music, really uh, such a uh, wellspring of so much that came out of there. So, and Storyville and Louis Armstrong and all that. Yeah. So, um, but for, you know, I, I'd been there a couple of times. I'd played in a couple of clubs in the French Quarter, a couple of mob bars. It was just uh, was the weirdest experience down there. It's such a heavy uh, atmosphere. And, uh, but, you know, I had, I had, this is the most time I ever spent there. We were there for, we were there for a couple of months, weren't we? Yeah, we were there for at least yeah. two months, maybe more. Altogether, I think we shot for like six weeks, but yeah. Wow. <laughs> but uh, but the film really holds up, Jim. It's a, it's really a, a wonderful ride. I, I I recommend it for anyone. Ah, uh, Tom. Well, I'm just uh, it was a pleasure to to make it with with you and all these other crazy wackos. <laughs> <laughs> and I someday maybe I'll look at it again. I just oh, find it yeah. painful to look back. But, oh, I know how you feel, yeah. But, yeah. you know, I tr made a new transfer for this, this DVD, and it looks really beautiful, yeah. but I couldn't really watch it somehow as a film. Yeah, I know. It, it, well, there's nothing like fresh material. Yeah. You can't, you can't avoid that. And sometimes it's like going back into old yearbooks or, you know, or old photo albums, and there you look a little odd, your ears are too big, and... Yeah, well, like, you, you, do you listen back to your, you know, stuff you recorded, like studio recordings very often? Do you go back and listen to, you know, Heart Attack and Vine, or mm -hmm. does it Sometimes bother you, or is it no, interesting? Uh, as a curiosity, I will, but for the most part, I avoid it. Uh, I'm usually looking forward. Yeah, it seems and like you Unless you think you should learn something from it. Oh, man, that was before I... Uh, develop this new technique or before I realized this or before I started listening to you know B.B. Rebozo or whatever it is <laughs> <laughs> yeah I missed his last few recordings <laughs> <laughs> and that, and it shows you know and they think yeah so in a way it's, it's difficult to go back because you know we like to see ourselves as moving forward but you know I yeah. don't know um 
Yeah, it's particularly for me, the thing about a film is that you want to enter it from a, a place of complete ignorance of, you know, I mean, you don't want to know anything about it. You want to just go into this world. Yeah. But you, you can't do that either with like a film you acted in or, or worked on in any way, you know. Well, nobody wants to think all your greatest moments are behind you. <laughs> <laughs> we want to think that they're all up ahead. Yeah. So, well, that's what, like, Duke Ellington, I saw some interview recently, and they were, you know, an old interview on, yeah. on film, and, and they said, uh, well, what's the greatest thing you ever wrote? And he said, ah, Everybody. the one, uh, one I'm going to write tomorrow. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's all fresh, you know? It hasn't even been picked off the tree yet. The best stuff comes out of the ground like a potato. And it's, it's, it's ripening as we speak. Or at least it's optimistic to look at it that way. Yeah. Because you never really know. No, you don't know, but, but uh, you, know, you live in that, that hope and spontaneity and of the future. Well, man, maybe we should stop looking back on that <laughs> love. <laughs> but anyway, man, I, I thank you for, you know, for your gifts to the movie. Oh, thanks. thanks for talking about it a little bit. Hey, thanks for, for making me a part of it, Jim. I was, uh, you were taking a chance on me. I was, I was green and uh, wet behind the ears. And, uh, you know. Hey, we're, well, we're, we're also going to put on this uh, DVD the uh, one of the two videos we did together, the uh, the one It's All Right With Me, oh, right. Cole Porter tune that we made. Uh, right. Kind of crazy little homemade video. It's all right with me. Yeah, I like that video a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I dug that. Great I dance know. moves on your part. I don't know if I was under the influence of Alvin Ailey <laughs> on some level there, Jim, or, <laughs> or a twisted version of that. Um, and then, of course, at the end, I'm carrying that big bust that made of plaster that I take out of the trunk of the car. And I and I and I, th I had always thought that it was a Mexican president, like or, or Benito Juarez or something. And then I realized that it was George Jefferson. It's George Jefferson. And I. Uh, and he's since been stolen, right? Well, that's that what bust. happens when you live in Hollywood. Jim. Yeah, that was my gift to you. A bit, <laughs> the bust of George Jefferson. He's gone now. Yeah, it was it was, it was stolen, and um, that was a sad day. Well, at least but we documented him. When you've got something of value like that in your yard, you know, you need a security system. <laughs> <laughs> For your bust of George Jefferson. Yeah. yeah. I should have kept it indoors. I knew that. It wasn't meant for the garden. Yeah, but he looked so cool out there. <laughs> I remember seeing him in your backyard. He I looked good. I think somebody was, was uh, casing the place when we pulled up. Well, they had good taste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. All right. Well, man, I'll let you go. Well, thanks a lot. And, hey, thank uh, you, Jim. And I sure hope to see you soon. And we got to cook up some other wacky things to yeah, do. Yeah, I'm ready. Let's do another picture. All right. You know? I'm, I'm working on a few ideas. So. All right. Count me in. All right, Tom. All right, man. Thanks for everything. All right, Jim. All right. Bye.